All right, so we're moving on to chapter four. Um, we're going to cover two lessons today, uh, 4.1, graphing relationships, and then 4.2, relations and functions. All right, so starting out lesson 4.1, we are talking about graphing relationships. Uh, graphs can be used to illustrate many different situations. You guys have seen a lot of graphs before. Um, when we relate graphs to situations, there's a couple things we want to keep in mind. Um, graphs are going to be read from left to right. to show the time that is passing, or just we can say to show time passing. So every time you see a graph, always go kind of like you read a sentence from the left to the right. And that will show you what's happening as time is passing. So when we have um, descriptions of graphs, we get these words that we see commonly, and we just want to make sure we understand what they mean. So we have some keywords. Um, so we're going to work on listing our keywords in order, so the order of the sentence, and decide which graph shows them. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you guys some examples. But some keywords that we see um, in our descriptions of graphs, we see was constant. So when something is constant as time passes, that means that the graph will be horizontal. It's just going to hold steady like this. It doesn't increase and it does not decrease. When we see rows steadily, that means that you will have um, an increase from the left to the right. So it's going to have a steady increase like that. Stayed the same. Anytime something stays the same as time passes, there's no change. So that would be another horizontal example. And then dropped sharply is going to be slanting downwards. Um, you know, something like that. If it was a really sharp drop, you know, it might be more steep like that. So now we're going to look at an example um, from what we were just talking about. It says the air, in, air temperature increased steadily. So maybe I'll even circle some words as we go along. It increased steadily for several hours and then remained constant. So if I were to even kind of draw this off on the side, increasing steadily means it's going to go up, remaining constant, no change, horizontal. At the end of the day, the temperature increased slightly again, so we have another increase, so another increase, before dropping sharply. So dropping sharply means it's going to go down. So we're looking for something that looks kind of like this, um, graph A, B, or C. Um, Graph A, what we notice is it starts out at a uh, constant, no change, but we were told it increased steadily first. Graph B also starts out constant, so right there I can eliminate those two options. But graph C is the one we want to kind of take a look at. Graph C, you have the increase steadily, then you have your constant, no change in the temperature, then an increase before it decreases again, which is kind of, I did a rough little rough drawing up here showing what that is. So we are going to choose graph C as the graph that represents the situation. Sometimes we are asked to draw our own example of um, a situation. So in this case, a person steadily speeds up, and you can see we have our nice little graph down here. Speed is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis. So first thing, let's kind of look at um, our keywords, a person steadily speeds up, so that's an increase in speed, walks at a constant pace, that constant pace is going to be horizontal, and then stops walking. So the stops walking part, that gets kind of interesting. But first, if we draw this out, a person steadily speeds up, so they're going to speed up, I have an increase, they walk at a constant pace, so this is just as time goes on, we're not going faster or slower, and then they stop walking. So it's really tempting to have them stop walking like this, but what's happening here is a decrease in speed as time passes. If you need just an immediate, um, like abrupt stop walking, then they're gonna be walking along and then they're just going to stop and it will go straight down. 
We have two types of graphs that we use to uh, model situations, a discrete graph and a continuous graph. So if you look at the two graphs, the main thing we notice or the main difference we notice is the discrete graph has individual points on the graph where the continuous graph, all those points are connected and it's, you can see it's kind of a continuous flow. So discrete graphs um, will be distinct points. The reason for that is in this case, we're talking number of days. So one day, two day, three day, four days the number of hits in millions. So after one day, we had almost two million hits. After two days, we had, you know, maybe two and a half million hits. After three days, we had four million hits. So these are distinct values. Um, we're not checking it at one and a half days to see where it is. We're not checking it at one day and a few hours. We're just checking once a day, and so we're going to have distinct points right here. Um, the continuous graph, here we're talking our months, January through December along the x-axis. The y-axis is average temperature. So temperatures can range. You know, you can see in January we start out at negative 20, and as we go through the month, we can see that there was an increase in temperature to February, then to March, then to April, and we are able to calculate um, all the degrees at any time of the day throughout. So you could find, oh, on January 1st at 2 p.m. is right here, or January 10th at 3 p.m. is right here. So it was a constant collection of data for our continuous graph. So that leads us into relations and functions, our 4.2 lesson. Um, relations can be represented many different ways. Um, you guys have probably seen most of these before. Ordered pairs, when you have an ordered pair, just keep in mind that you do have an X and a Y. The X is always the first number, the Y is always the second number. Um, you can represent your relation in a table, so these same ordered pairs can be just in a table of values where we have a column of our X's and a column of our Y's. Um, for a graph, now these are crazy big, I'm not sure, but we could plot all of our ordered pairs. Um, you can see, let's see, from the origin, negative 2, positive 2, there's the first one. Then back to the origin, negative 2, negative 2 is right there. 0, 1 is right there, and then 3, 1 is right there. So it's a visual representation of a relation. And then a mapping diagram um, these are the ones students tend to be less familiar with. A mapping diagram is going to map all of the x's, so the x's will be on the left, to the y's on the right. Um, and all you do is you can say, okay, well, the negative 2 is being mapped to the negative 2. So that is going to be the same thing as this ordered pair, negative 2, negative 2. You can also see that the negative 2 is mapped to the positive 2. So that ordered pair would keep the negative 2 as your x and a positive 2 as your y. And then we can see that the 0 gets mapped to the 1, and the 3 gets mapped to the 1, giving us these same ordered pairs, 0, 1, and 3, 1. Right, we have some pretty important vocab in algebra um, right here, and we're going to look at this some more and keep working with this. But um, I believe you have to write this into your note packet, so go ahead and pause and... Um, as needed as we talk about each one. First one is a function. A function is a relation, so all those ordered pairs, the table values on the last slide, those are all relations, um, but only, some, only sometimes is a relation also a function. So a function is a relation for which each input has exactly one output. Um, a really good way to remember that is that you don't have any repeating x values. Domain is the set of input values, so what are you putting into the function, and we always remember that domain is our x values, and then the range is the set of output values. When you put in some values for x, what do you get back out for y? So your range are the output values or the y values. And we'll look at some examples of these um, in the upcoming videos.